Just going to be a very quick pre-video subscriber update. So I ordered a couple things off Amazon, added another 8 gigabytes of RAM in my primary system that I use for video editing, and I have a total of 16 gigs of DDR3 in here now. I also ordered some more lighting. This is a 1600 lumen G7 light bulb, 3000K color temperature. This thing was pretty expensive, 24 bucks off Amazon, but they are totally worth it. I use them for lighting in here. I have an 1100 lumen one up there, which is actually a lot cheaper. And the weird thing about this is I placed the order Friday night and it got here on Sunday and I didn't even know Amazon shipped over the weekend. So uh, that was a big surprise when I found a package on the front of my door. And I'm also waiting for a base extender for this light bulb because I'm going to use this bulb to light up this area right here, which is actually um, pretty dark. So that is my subscriber update. Let's go ahead and get started with this video. <laughs> installment of AA computers and technology and as you can see I went ahead and threw that light right above me so if there's some weird shadows coming down here I apologize that base extender still has not come in but today I'm going to address a serious issue I am suffering from Linux withdrawal because I have not used a Linux distribution on my system in quite a while now I have used a couple four videos uh, but not on any of my actual main systems my laptop nor my desktop now my desktop used to have Xubuntu 14.04 installed on it when it had the Pentium 4 um, paired with the uh, uh, GeForce, I think it was a 6200 in there, and I absolutely loved using Xubuntu. And I'm going to be honest here guys, I could not use Linux as my primary operating system because I just use too many programs that won't run on Linux. And all the Linux guys in the audience right now, because I know I have a lot of Linux people in the audience, um, are probably screaming, well you could just use the open source alternative, but there's a, usually a huge learning curve with that uh, or you could just use wine but in the past I have tried to use a lot of the programs I use on this PC with wine and they just don't work including the uh, Adobe CS6 master collection um, I did get Adobe Dreamweaver uh, CS4 and Adobe Photo Photoshop CS4 to work with wine but not the newer versions um, so yeah I just can't use Linux yet because I it, it won't run those programs that you use on a day-to-day -day basis now that being said, when I had Xubuntu 14.04 installed on my desktop over here, I absolutely loved using it for basic day-to-day -day tasks such as writing up Word documents, creating Excel sheets, doing a little bit of coding, and just browsing the web. And I want to install it alongside the current Windows installation I have on my Dell Inspiron 15 uh, model 3521. This thing has 8 gigabytes of RAM, 120 gigabytes solid state drive, dual core Intel Celeron processor in it. Um, it's a pretty nice little machine, uh, really quick with Windows, and I want to see how uh, Xubuntu 14.04 is going to perform alongside that Windows installation. So I'm really making this video for two groups of people. The first ones are my subscribers. So I thought you guys might find this interesting. Chances are, though, if you're subscribed to my channel, you already know that you can install a Linux distribution alongside Windows, and you probably also know how to do it as well. It's not very hard. The second group of people that I'm catering towards are those who want to see how well a Ubuntu-based Linux distribution will actually run on this particular model of laptop, which is once again the Dell Inspire on 15 model 3521. Now mine is slightly modified. As I said, I have the SSD in here with another four gigabytes of RAM, but really the only major difference is the solid state drive. Um, so performance might be a little better on my system in particular, uh, but we can still see what hardware is going to work with Xubuntu or any Ubuntu-based operating system. And we can also get an idea of general performance. Xubuntu finally finished installing onto my flash drive right there. Let's go ahead and get it up and running on this laptop over here. Uh, that's weird. Xubuntu is not detecting my installation of Windows 10, so I got to figure out what I'm going to do about that. So Gparted is reading my solid state drive as completely unallocated, which is not true because I do have that installation of Windows 10 on it, so I'm not really sure what's going on with this either. I am uh, really confused right now because you know, installing Windows alongside Linux or vice versa, it's not that hard. Usually you just push a button and it does it for you. Um, but this is becoming a big pain in the rear end. I decided to go ahead and try the 15.10 release, which is the latest one. I believe it's uh, Wildly Werewolf, maybe. Um, and this one actually does support installing Xubuntu alongside Windows 10, as indicated by that option right there. So I'm going to go ahead and continue, and hopefully the installation actually works this time. And I'm going to go ahead and give Xubuntu 30 gigabytes of space, leaving 90 for my Windows installation.
And I just booted up Exubuntu from my hard drive, or I guess solid state drive, and the boot time was like that. It was crazy. So I'm running some updates now. I'm going to check if there's any proprietary drivers available. Then I'm going to shut the system down and reboot it on camera to show you how quick it is. Once again, I have a slightly different system configuration. So if you don't have a solid state drive in your Dell Inspire on 15, your boot times are going to be a little bit longer. Ah, you guys gotta love that glare on this screen. Hey guys, I know you can see me in the reflection. Let's go ahead and boot this system up. I went ahead and installed all the updates, and I also installed Chromium because I'm not a big fan of Firefox. Um, as you can see, Windows 10 is listed down here, but we want to boot from that Xubuntu installation, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter on Ubuntu in the uh, Grub Boot menu. And in just a few seconds, we should be at the login screen. There we go, and that was lightning fast. Just gonna log in. And you can see everything's loaded up already. Sorry guys, I do realize that the last clip was kinda out of focus, but I got the camera back in focus and we are back in business. So what works and what doesn't work on this machine? Well, let me tell you, to my surprise, pretty much everything is working at this point. Before I move on, I do want to show you guys that my Windows installation is still there and working. So I'm going to go ahead and boot the system on, go into the Grub Boot menu and select Windows 10. Okay, scroll down, Windows 10. And we are loading. Come on. And there we go, Windows 10 does still work alongside that our Xubuntu installation. Without having to install any drivers, right off the bat, I had wireless connectivity, Bluetooth connectivity, the battery meter is working, I actually do get audio output right now, and when I got to the desktop, I could actually set the screen to its maximum resolution without having to install any drivers, and according to the Ubuntu Software Center, there are no proprietary drivers available for this system at this time. One thing that usually ends up being a big issue on Linux distros is the sleep mode. Um, for a lot of systems I install, Linux distributions on the sleep mode does not work or suspend, whatever you want to call it. So let's go ahead and try that out now. This is the first time I am going to try to put it into suspend. So I'm just going to hit suspend. There we go. And according to the bottom of the PC, we are in suspend mode right now or suspended. Let me get the camera right. Let's go ahead and power this thing back on. And there we go. Suspend is functional. For the next couple minutes, I'm just gonna play around with the system for a little bit, open up a couple programs, browse the web to give you guys a better idea of what it feels like to use this system with Xubuntu installed. Now, as I said earlier, I do have a solid state drive in here, so it's gonna be a little bit quicker than your system if your system still has that traditional 5,400 RPM hard drive in it. I do have a installation video on how to install a solid state drive into this particular PC. Um, I, when I installed the solid state drive, I just decided to make a video out of it. So if you wanna check that out, the link will be in the description. It's a pretty cheap upgrade, 40 bucks for a 120 gigabyte solid state drive. Let's start with some web browsing. I'm going to go ahead and pop open Chromium. And what is the screen brightness set to on here? Uh, we're about 50%, so I'm just going to leave it like that. It looks like it's coming out okay on camera, so I'm fine with that. Let's go to YouTube and just try to play back a YouTube video. Yeah. And of course, due to copyright issues, I have to go to my channel to play a YouTube video. We're playing in 1080p. Hello and welcome. Or maybe not. Oh yes we are. Okay, so playback is just fine. We're getting about 30 FPS, which is what this video should be playing back at. Um, let's go ahead and visit my website. And we'll just browse around here. So as far as web browsing goes, I mean, everything seems like it's working just fine. And 
last but not least, you know, if you've seen one of my videos before, you know how much I hate CNN's website because it is just so resource heavy. So CNN, let's see if the system crashes when we go into CNN's website. Um, how well does it handle this? That's uh, not too bad. That's surprising. All right. Something that I forgot to do before was to test all the ports on the system to make sure they are all working. All the USB ports do work, the SD card reader does work, and our Ethernet is functional. So everything is working. Let's go ahead and pop open some more programs. I said I was going to use this to write some documents, so let's go ahead and open up LibreOffice Writer. Hello. YouTube, I know you guys love that generic phrase. If I can spell YouTube, oh my goodness, <laughs> Whew, brain fart there. All right, just play around with the text a little bit. Make it bigger, make it bold, and change the color. So LibreOffice Writer is working fine. Can't, uh, discard, please, don't save. Um, let's go to the equivalent of Excel, which is LibreOffice Calc. Let's just enter in a quick formula. Let's do 10 plus 20. Enter and drag it around. Oh my goodness, come on. I had the wrong box there, but drag the formula down and there we go. I really want to keep this video short as in under 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start speeding things up. I'm gonna pop open a couple more programs and then that'll be about it for this video. I also have a couple other things to say at the end, but besides that, we will be done in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna pop open Ubuntu Software Center. We're gonna try some multitasking right now. So I'm gonna open up the Software Center, drag it over here, open up the File Manager, drag it over here, open up our web browser which is taking a bit longer than usual. There we go. Why don't we have two web browsers open at this point? I'm gonna pop open Firefox too because some people might be interested to see how that comes up on the system and I clicked mail reader on accident. Heck, we'll have that open. There we go. What else can I open up on here? I'm just gonna scroll through the applications. Um, let's look at our music browser. And everything is just opening like that. You gotta love a solid state drive. Mm, and last but not least, I think I'll pop open the media player. And why don't we actually try to play back a video. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a uh, SD card so I can transfer something over. So overall, I am very impressed with the performance of Exabintu 50. On this Dell Inspiron 15 laptop. I'm kind of disappointed that we couldn't install the LTS release. I'm not really sure what happened there, so if you know, please leave a comment in the comment section. And really, that's going to be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. If you saw something wrong, uh, go ahead and post it in the comment section. I do not care. Let's keep the criticism positive, though, because when it starts to get negative, the comments start to get ridiculous. Uh, don't forget to like this video, and of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.